So, so my name is my turn, and I'm late. I have to myself that every day. Like 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 I'm like playing guitar and trying to get an idea of Pokemon. Good suggestion. I'm not going to ask you. Hey, Ryan. 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 This semester, we will focus on the various types, moves, and abilities of the creatures we call Pokemon. Today, electric Pokemon. Specifically, how they produce such shockingly powerful electricity. All of them. Oi, if that's how you want it, we'll start with a pop quiz. What is electricity? Pikachu uh -huh. semen. It's, it's electricity. Shocky <laughs> juice? <sighs> This is gonna be a difficult year. Dude, really? Electricity describes the flow of charged particles. Some through an object of some sort. Thank God. Excellent. Thank you, Gold Star to you. So, next question How do Pokemon generate it? Vibrating. Maybe they clench and try to hold on and actually generate it. It can be the same yeah, far away from they run someone real else. Fast. No? There are multiple different ways Pokemon can produce or harness electricity. Static electricity, magnetism, external sources, and of course the focus of today, bioelectricity. Bioelectricity refers to electrical potentials and currents in living cells and tissues, usually from the movement of ions across biological membranes that charge the spaces in and out of cells and tissues as a whole. Now the key difference between the electricity in your house and the electricity in you is that the electricity in your home uses electrons. A lot of animals and Pokemon use electricity in their daily lives. Some are merely capable of sensing it while others can make it themselves. A creature that can sense electricity is classed as electroreceptive, while one that can actually generate it is called electrogenic. Usually, these electrogenic organisms are also electroreceptive, and it's theorized that the power to generate electricity evolved from electroreceptive organisms a long, long time ago. Finally, the process of an organism making electricity is called bioelectrogenesis. Oh, that's actually very interesting. God, I totally understand. What are you kids on? Electrogenic organisms use their power for many different reasons. For communication, defense, or as a weapon for hunting prey. And, like I said, it can be used as a sixth sense, also known as electroreception. A few famous animals from this earth that are capable of using electricity are of course electric rays and eels. But how do they actually make electricity? Well, let's go to the lab and find out. So it's time for a practical. So grab your go-go goggles and gather round. Safety first, kids. Or not, I don't really care about any of you. When we dissect these electrogenic organisms, what we can find is that they have special electric organs adapted for the sole purpose of making and storing electricity. If we zoom in through the microscope, we can see that these organs are made up of modified muscle and nerve cells called electrocytes. And it's these electrocytes that produce the electric currents through the movement of ions. As you can see here, they are stacked on top of each other to form structures called electroplaques. And the tissues of these electric organs are made of tons of these stacks. Creatures with these organs even have special electric lobes in their brain for controlling them. Okay, troop, back to Pokemon. We see Pokemon blasting off lightning bolts left and right all the time, but conducting electricity through air is actually incredibly difficult. That's why we don't really see it except during lightning. That's because air is not a good conductor, it's, it's got a very large resistance. Right, time for some physics. Yay! <laughs> Dude, why are you pulling? You know he's right. Oi! I hate it too, but it's important. Basically, there's something called Ohm's Law. This clever fellow called Ohm figured out that in a circuit, current is equal to voltage divided by resistance. Because air is so resistant, it requires a huge current density to power electricity through air. 
Ohm's law tells us that you need a massive voltage to push this huge current. In fact, it takes around 30,000 volts of electricity to cross just one centimeter of air. So that's 75,000 per inch, 3 million per meter, and about 1 billion volts to push lightning from the sky to the ground. That is a lot. For context, an electric eel produces a maximum of 860 volts. For fish, their environment matters, as salt water is less resistant than fresh water. That means many species have to play around with this triangle depending on where they live. As you can see, Pokemon are ridiculously more powerful than animals. Wow. Wow. <laughs> no clue. Well, that's pretty good. Yeah. Science is crazy. Of course, bioelectricity isn't the only way Pokemon use and generate electricity. Some Pokemon like Mareep and Jolteon use static electricity built up in their fur and wool for attacking their enemies, while some Pokemon such as Magnemite use magnetism. We can come back to that one day if you want. Finally, some Pokemon are simply able to store external electricity, like lightning, for their attacks. Yeah, well, what, what else? That's actually that pretty cool. So bad. What else you got? Nothing. Oh, what? After all that. Uh, that's it. Lesson is over. That's how electric Pokemon generate electricity for their moves. In fact, the bell's about to go off in three, two, one. I cheers, guys. Hopefully, you picked something up, and I will see you all again for another class of Pokemon Biology 101, if there's any of you left. Next time, but yeah, I live here, Mr. Thirty First. I don't understand. I want to learn about Pokemon breeding. Wow, you made it! You are a star. Seeing as you made it this far, maybe you'd consider subscribing and potentially leaving a like on the video. This was another pilot, and I'd really appreciate any thoughts and opinions you have on it. Any feedback that might help me improve this series going forward. I obviously tried to make this as simple as possible so anyone can understand it, but if you are interested in the more complex details and intricacies of the science, let me know. I could always do a Biology 101 Plus or something, or alternatively, you could always look it up yourselves. I want to say a massive thank you to everyone who helped make this video possible. Their names are currently rolling on screen now, and their links will all be in the description below. Especially my Patreon, your boy Slifer, who was also in the video. Also a massive shout out to everyone who's helped me get this far, we're nearing 600 subscribers and I haven't been able to do anything for the 500 uh, mark and I promised some shout outs but I looked through Amino and I can't find anyone so if you were involved in helping me get to 500 please let me know and I can maybe arrange uh, a shout out and links and stuff as well. I don't think I have anything else to say but thank you very much and I will see you in the next video.